Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Evan Schneider. And today in this video, I'm going to be taking you through my process of color grading some stock footage that I shot in Oregon. It's almost like a dailies grade or it's kind of a quick way to color grade a lot of footage at the same time. So I'm gonna be sharing some techniques of how to process footage quickly. And we're going to be doing some basic look creation, giving the footage a bit of a subtle style so that it stands out on stock footage sites. If you don't know about the beauty of stock footage, and you have a bunch of footage laying around, I would highly encourage looking into posting some of your footage on a stock footage site to kind of smooth out your income on the side with footage you already have. With that, let's get into it and I'll show you kind of what's going on in Resolve. Okay, so I have all of my clips already trimmed. In this first section, I have a bunch of footage that I shot on the X-H2S. And then in this second section, I have a bunch of footage that I shot on the DJI Mavic 3 Cine. So there's a couple things I'm taking into consideration when grading this footage. One, I don't want the grade to be too strong because I want to leave room if the client or whoever buys the footage wants to add a bit of their own grade on top of it. But at the same time, I want it to stand out on the stock footage websites to increase my chances of someone purchasing it. So the first thing I need to do is convert this footage from the log profiles. In this case, everything is organized in one timeline, but if you have clips kind of scattered throughout and you've already edited a piece with multiple cameras, it's a great opportunity to use color management. So I'm gonna click on the gear icon down here and I'm gonna go to my color management settings and I've already set it up in this, but I've changed my color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. And then I've unchecked automatic color management. I'm changing my color processing mode to HDR DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate. My output color space is going to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, but use whatever works for you, whatever workflow you are most comfortable with and that you prefer. I'm gonna hit save or cancel for me because I've already set it. And I'm going to go back to my timeline and nothing happened. This is because this footage was shot on a Fuji X-H2S and the DJI Mavic 3 Cine, and they do not contain any color management information in the metadata. So I have one more step that I need to do. I need to go to my media pool and right here I have all of my DJI clips. So I'm just going to select all of them and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to input color space and I'm going to set it to DJI D gamut slash D log. And that's the profile that I shot in. So when I click that, let's go over to these shots. Now they are fully converted to Rec 709 automatically. The next thing I need to do is go to my Fuji footage and I'm going to go to my XH2S bin in my media pool. I'm gonna select all, right click and go to input color space Fujifilm F-Log2. And now all of our Fuji clips are now properly color managed. So now I'm just gonna scroll through and kind of get a feel for what's going on with all of this footage. Um, I have a bunch of waterfall footage, you know, outdoor. So it's all kind of nature stuff. So what I'm gonna try to do is kind of create a look that I can apply across all of the footage. And I'm going to kind of use some hero shots to make that. And then I'm gonna apply it across all the footage and then I'm going to do some color corrections underneath that look that I created. So in the interest of time and making this video nice and concise, I'm going to skip my process of actually creating the look and I'm just going to kind of summarize what I've built. First thing I did is create my node tree. So I have my primary correction, which is going to be the color correction for each shot. And then I have a tone curve where I've just created a little bit of extra contrast into the footage using curves. I changed it to editable splines and then set the highlight and shadow point, made a nice S curve to increase the contrast a little bit. Next thing I did was go into my curves and I set it to 50% so that I had a little bit more control. And then I'll turn it on and off here so I'm just kind of introducing a little bit of coolness into the shadows and a little bit of warmth in the midtones and then cooling the highlights down a little bit as well. So this is before and this is after. This is before and after. Next, what I did is go to my hue versus and I'll turn that on. This is before and this is after. I've pushed the yellow tones a little bit warmer. I've pulled the green tones a little bit cooler 
and then I've also increased the saturation of um, go to my saturation. I've increased the red saturation and kind of kept the blue saturation where it is. I've also gone to my loom versus sat and increased the saturation of the midtones, keeping the shadows and the highlights relatively neutral. Next thing I did in my secondary node was just add a little bit of contrast and pivot and I adjusted my highlights and shadows sliders to just kind of increase the contrast a little bit and make it pop a tiny bit more. I think it could maybe use a tiny bit more actually. So this is my look. So this is before, this is just regular color managed, Rec 709, and then this is after, and I can make a few other adjustments. I might bring the red tones down, or I might introduce some green into the mid tones a little bit. There we go, that feels better. So yeah, this is before, and this is after before and after. What I'm gonna do next is basically take this um, node tree and I'm gonna hit option one and that will save it to my memory one. And that way I can go through the rest of the clips and kind of preview this look on the clips and adjust it to whatever is necessary. Okay, now that I'm on a new clip, I can just hit command one and it applies to that clip and I can see how it feels. Right away, I'm seeing that the yellow kind of reddish tones are a little bit overpowering. So I'm just gonna go to my hue versus sat and bring that down a little bit. And then maybe go to my curves and bring down the red tones a tiny bit. I also think the teal colors could push a little bit bluer. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna resave it to memory two so that I have command one is memory one, command two is memory two. Let's see what it looks like on these. So I'm just going to each clip and just kind of hitting command two, seeing what the memory does on there. That looks pretty good. Now remember the goal here is just to make improvements. I'm not trying to create a final grade on this footage. This is memory two and this is memory one. So it's nice to kind of flip back and forth. Um, I think it might be introducing a little bit too much contrast. So I'm gonna go to my tone curve and I like the curve that I've created, but I think it's a little bit too strong. So I'm just gonna set it to like 0.6. I'll save that to memory three. Yeah, that feels a lot better. So that's one, that's three, that's two, which is a little bit cooler. Um, I might, I like the coolness of two and I like the contrast of three. So I might go to my curves. I'm gonna go to my hue versus, oh, sorry, hue versus bring this yellow down a teeny bit, and then go to my curves, and I'm just gonna bring the red down a tiny bit. So it's kind of nice, I can just kind of flip through now and see what I like the best. I think one is pretty nice, maybe, maybe three. Three and four are similar, they have the same contrast. So now I can actually officially go through, I've kind of created my different looks. Let's just apply five, to every single clip, I'm going to go to my light box. And this way I can just select all of my clips and I can hit command five and it'll apply memory five to every single clip, which is great. Now I have a node tree on every single clip and now everything has a look and the only thing left for me to do is to go through and color correct um, all of the footage. So one great thing I can do here is I can go scene by scene. So like this scene overall, I shot it pretty consistently. And I think this scene overall is a little bit um, too contrasty. So what I can do is just go to my primary, I can decrease the contrast. And I'm going to bring my gain down a little bit to get those highlights back in check. And then I might just warm it up a tiny bit. Um, to kind of bring out that contrast. And then I might decrease the saturation um, just to make it a little bit less crazy. I can go back to my light box and I'm gonna select all of the clips that are in that scene. And then I'll right click on this one and hit apply grade. And that's gonna ask me if I wanna replace the grades of all of the clips I've selected. I'll hit replace. And now I can go back through and check out these grades and I can make sure that they look the way that I want them to look. So this is before our correction, and this is after. Before and after. 
before, after. Now I'm basically going to go do that process through the rest of the footage. So I'm gonna go basically scene by scene, make some primary adjustments, broad brush strokes, and apply it to all those clips in that scene and then go through clip by clip and make specific adjustments based on the clip. This workflow is perfect for if you're doing dailies. You can also use this workflow on a master timeline workflow in Resolve. You can set up Resolve to um, have a timeline, which is the master timeline that contains every single clip included in the project. And then every timeline after that that you build will reference those clips in the master timeline. So it's an incredible way to save you a bunch of time if you're working on a project using the same clips over and over. So I'm gonna go through and grade the rest of these clips and then I will show you when I'm done kind of how it all looks. Okay, great. So I've gone through the rest of the footage and I'll just point out some things that I noted as I was going through the process. These shots with the clouds, my main goal was to create some nice color contrast. So I'm going to my vector scope here and I paid attention to this area and I just wanted to kind of straddle the middle quadrants um, a little bit more. So I increased the color temperature, which you can see here, just brings out the warmth in the sky. Another thing that I did was in this scene, I just wanted to make sure that these clouds were pretty neutral. So I made sure that this mass of color data was just right in the middle of the vector scope. This means that it's neutral and that it's not pushing one direction. And I just kind of let the rest of the landscape sit where it did with the neutral looking clouds. And then in this scene, I kind of changed the look a little bit. I felt like it was pushing the water a little bit too teal. So I went to my hue versus curves and I went to my hue versus hue and I just dialed in the point where the water is and I just brought it down so that it kind of reflected the deep blue of the ocean. So from here, I'm basically going to export all these shots as individual clips. And for film supply, they require log and graded versions of all the clips. So I'm going to export all of these as individual clips with unique file names at ProRes422HQ for the log clips and then ProRes422 for the regular clips because they're not going to be graded as heavily and I can save some file size space for that. I export them at their source resolution and then I will upload them to Film Supply. People can purchase them and Film Supply markets them. And like I said, it smooths out kind of the ups and downs of being a freelancer. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for coming along with me and I'm glad I could share this process with you. If you are interested in some LUTs, LUTs are a really great way to build looks and to apply a creative look to your footage if you don't want to do it all manually here. Um, I sell LUTs on my website, LUTcompany.com. There's some really nice, subtle, creative looks that you can use for purposes like this. Um, I also have a Super 8 emulation on that store, so go check it out, LUTcompany.com. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.